Hello everyone, my name is Damien Oliver, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you guys have been following my channel for a bit now, you'll probably notice I haven't been uploading lately. Um, so I wanted to kind of put out a video to explain that, as well as put out a video to explain the new updates that have been applied uh, to Unstable. Now, um, as you can kind of see around me, there has been some changes made. I have been playing offline. Uh, to try to get it brought, brought back up to where my old video was because um, we needed some new world gen so I brought us to a new world. Um, that was just much easier than trying to explore out you know thousands of blocks and set up a mining situation. But as you can see we got a silver tree over there where I have another sapling planted uh, over yonder but it hasn't grown yet. This one does in fact have a pure node and it's helping out with uh, some of the mana in the area and the paint, which is kind of nice. Um, we'll get to that more later. Uh, actually, I'll probably get that more to that in a different episode when I actually start, you know, doing progress again. Um, and as you can see, we got some blood magic already set up here. I've already outlined. Um, the entire blood magic setup, which conveniently fits basically inside one entire floor of my building. Um, downside is it goes wall to wall, so I have to figure out. A, right now, I got to, I got to figure out where to place this ladder. But that's besides the point. Um, also discovered a couple other things with biomes and flooding in particular. Um, we got two different trees here I really like. One is uh, I want to say that's a fir, and that one there is a red one. Um, there's not anything particularly special about these two trees, besides the fact it takes one sapling to make all of that, which is a lot of charcoal. Um, especially when you have a lumber axe from Tinker's Construct, but you can break everything in one moment. Um, we come down here, I've already mm, taken the liberty of cutting down one tree each. And yeah, that was a fir tree. And the other one was breadwood. This was from one tree, 45 or 46. Uh, blocks of wood from one tree and we got what uh, a little over seven stacks of wood from one redwood tree plus you get all the uh, saplings and everything too um, they also sometimes drop pine cones I found which is more or less good to use for dye or cocoa beans so that's not really important so what's been going on um, well, frankly, you I haven't been updating lately because of some instability issues. Um, there, one of the new mods is called the, uh, the Graves mod, um, which basically, as the name suggests, just adds graves to the game. Whenever you die, it generates this headstone, and, um, that has your name on it to kind of show who you are and then it creates a two by one pot in the ground that has your body and items inside of it which is great for all intents and purposes but I uh, died once and the headstone didn't generate properly so I couldn't get inside the other area the one that had all my stuff in it without crashing the game so I kinda had to do a semi small restart um, but that's one of the new mods um, we also got Aura Crusade now which is kind of a magic mod in a sense um, but it was roughly based off of uh, Otania I believe um, and it features a different sort of system like that um, there has been some people who have had issues with it, 
and I'm not sure if I have an adequate amount of space for it in this building, but we'll see. Um, that might be something where I have to carve out a special room just for that, if, if I get to it. Um, we do have Botania, which we did have from before. We obviously have Tinker's Construct. Um, I found that I really liked using the slime hammers, um, or at least the blue slime handles, um, because they generate... What slime does is every about a hundred hits or something like that, it generates a, uh, a very small blue slime the type of slime that bounces around and tries to hit you but you can't actually do any damage so you can kind of keep them as a pet if you want or if you kill them again you can use the blue slime drops for them to make handles for your other uh, material items so it was kind of a self-propagating system that way the only downside is I can't repair with the handle uh, material I have to m repair with the head of the material, um, or head of the tool, excuse me. Um, let's see here. We still have Blood Magic and we do have Thumbcraft, and I've gotten both of those back up to where we were before. In fact, Blood Magic, I actually have a tier, tier 2 altar if you saw that upstairs. So we're actually a little bit further ahead than that. Um, Blood Magic does have two new crafting systems, um, which Okay, I'm not sure you can really call one of them a crafting system. But the Hellfire Forge has its own special properties, and then there's another item that has a different set of crafting. We'll get to that more later. Um, of course, we got Blood Mad or Build Craft in here. Um, we do have uh, Pumatic Craft, which seems to be more stable now. Um, the only downside to it is. Um, we, as the uh, text or chat is very good at telling you, um, it is still unstable. There are a few things that are, have bugs in it. And, um, yeah, I guess the name of the pack is unstable for a reason. Um, so, um, it does here warn us that the in game wiki, which is the uh, in game documentation for it, um, doesn't properly work with it, um, which is true, but it does, you know, cover most of the basics. Every now and then you will find something that doesn't have a proper page or something like that, but it's pretty minor. We also now have a hydraulic craft, which is one of the main reasons why we restart the world, because it generated uh, two new types of ores, copper and lead. Um, we'll, we may be getting into that more later. I kind of want to take a look at this mod. The only downside is it requires a lot of water, which would usually require, uh, like a, uh, infinite water source, um, like a, uh, I like an aqueous accumulator to power, um, but we might be able to get away with a mining well and a, uh, like a 2x2 two two pond or something from Buildcraft. Um, we'll see. Um, it does use up a lot of water, which is the only real bad thing about it. Um, now, I have noted, I have found uh, both of these ores, um, copper and lead, so they are both in my world. Um, and the in-game wiki here is a little odd because it says from Y to 90 and it doesn't really explain what that means. From my understanding it's anything from Y32 on up. Um, so I can't get it at the same level as I get it and get uh, uh, diamonds, gold, and everything else. But I do get most of the stuff. I have found some of the stuff I need. Um, and my uh, we still have the furnace mod, so my uh, pulverizer and furnace combos with bonuses have given me some extra copper. The only downside is I found that the lead is not compatible with that. 
Um, it doesn't have a recipe for that. So there are other ways of doubling that. We might have to explore that later. Um, one of the other new tech mods we got is Neotech, um, which is a great addition in my opinion. This seems to be com something kind of similar to Thermal Expansion. Um, there are some differences, um, but you got like RF uh, storage, uh, generators, um, and the portable tanks. Well, that one's created, so you don't get that one. But uh, they are pretty simple recipes, too. So, you know, that's just iron. That one, um, this one is just the previous tank and some gold. Then this one's previous tank and some diamond. So they're really simple recipes. Um, they do have a couple other nifty features, like they got a dual crafter here, and the flushable chest and trash bags are both uh, like a void chest and bag. You can put stuff in there and they just disappear. Um, it does got a wrench for some things, of course. Um, it does have a chunk loader, which is seems like a really expensive recipe, but it's actually really simple compared to some other mods out there. I mean, I can make this already if I really wanted to. I just don't have anything that needs to be chunk loaded right now. Um, the only thing I have noticed is this also adds 10 ingots to the game. And unfortunately, this was loaded in after I created this world. So I don't have 10 in any chunks that I have currently explored, which as you can see is quite a bit. Um, there is a bright side though, and the fact that tin really isn't used for a whole lot. The crusher is kind of kind of annoying, um, but yeah, the only thing that the uh, dust is really used for is a tin and to make bronze, and bronze really isn't used for much either, except for this acceleration pipe. So, yeah, no tan, but in my opinion, that's kind of a minor thing right now. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else? Yeah, I just went back over the mod list, and I think the only other new thing is what we can see behind us right now. Um, and that is the Doors mod. Oops. Um, the Doors mod is a really simple storage mod. Um, most of these uh, are equivalently one chest. They only allow us to store X number of items, in this case four, but each of these items can store up to eight different stacks of it. Um, so it's a good visual way of, it's kind of like barrels, but uh, more divided. Um, until we get to one of the big drawers like this, which again is only w one chest uh, and a little bit extra wood. Um, but uh, it also is upgradable, like our iron chest over here, which is, you know, a double chest. This one here I've upgraded with a little bit of obsidian, and now is equivalently five chests in one block. Um, I think I did the same thing with this one here. So this is a, a one block that it can only take two items, but each item can have 80 stacks of that item. Um, this one I also have on there, so it automatically voids anything over the 160 stacks that it can hold, if you know you get that much. Um, I have maxed out the. Uh, I haven't upgraded this drawer yet. But you can see here that the nether rack um, up at the top says there's 8 times 64. And it's real simple. You uh, left click once, you get the um, one full stack out, right click, you put everything in your, or sorry, double right click, and you put everything of that material in your inventory back into the drawer. Uh, alternately, you can use shift left click and just get one. Um, there's also the two special drawers I really like about this one, though, is the drawer controller and the compacting drawer. Let me go over the compacting one first. 
Um, if you look here at the, at the top, it says I have one full stack plus three extra blocks of iron, four iron ingots, and uh, eight nuggets. Now let me check out the four ingots here. And you can see the number drops. But I'm also going to take out the uh, nuggets, and that number drops. But watch what happens when I try to take out something when it says I don't have any more. Oh wait, now we got one st uh, stack and two blocks, eight bars, and eight ingots. So all the iron was just converted. In fact, if you shift right click on this, oops, oh sorry, empty hand, there we go. Um, you can see what upgrades are on these drawers if you shift right click and the compacting drawers will show you the maximum number you had if you take out all of those items in that form. So I have 66 blocks or 602 uh, ingots or 5,000 and a half nuggets. Um, again this is if you took out all those items in that particular type so you can mix and match as you need and it will automatically convert for you. And it works for I believe just about any ingot and most stuff that can be compacted into uh, like a 3x3 three three or I think a 2x2 two two crafting grid. So redstone goes to box just as easily. Um, I believe coal works, lapis works, um, like I said, any iron ingots. Yeah, you get the idea. The other one I want to bring up is drawer controller. The drawer controller is amazingly useful in this mod. Um, and it's pretty simple to make, all things considered. I mean, it is one of the more expensive blocks in this mod, but it's easy to make. You just got one extra drawer and a piston. Whereas the, com whereas the compacting drawer um, is basically the same thing with just the iron down there. So, um, what's the difference? Well, there's, um, I'm sorry, I showed you the wrong recipe before. This is just a, a couple, a drawer, some stone, and some repeaters, really. The diamond um, really isn't much of an issue for me at this point, but um, like I said, it's not really an expensive recipe to get. But there's two different types of drawer controllers. One is the main drawer controller, and then one is called the slave drawer, I believe. Which, again, isn't very expensive. It's basically the same recipe, just with some gold. But um, what what they do is the drawer controller connects to all these different drawers. Um, so if I um, watch my iron ingots, if I double right click on this, my iron ingots and the nuggets that I had earlier, even though they weren't on my hot bar, have both gone back into the drawer over here. And that works for anything that's connected to any of these drawers. So if I had some string, I had some clay, some andesite, and you know a little bit of gold, two right clicks on here takes all of them out of my inventory and auto selects them. And then the slave is actually kind of similar, but it's um, it's mainly used to make uh, like if I had this on that wall over there, I could put the slave in the corner and continue making drawers here on this, on this wall, and they would all connect. So it's kind of like a bridge um, between two different angles or what the case is. The only downside with this system, you know, with the uh, drawers uh, mod in general, is the controller can only reach out to 12 blocks in each direction, which I haven't really counted, but that's three, four, eight. So yeah, I could go basic from where that drawer controller is right now. I could basically go wall to wall and fit and get everything in one controller. So that's not much of an issue. But if I wanted to go over on the sides, even if I put in a slave box there, 
they wouldn't work. Um, well, they might get like one or two rows that might work, but the rest of them wouldn't because the slave, like I said, acts like a bridge. It does not act like an extension for the controller, unfortunately. Um, I wish they would add that, but that's just me. So, we also got a nice little crafting system here. Uh, well, I say nice in the fact that it's all neat and compact. Um, I don't like how everything's at different mm, elevations and everything here. So I might still remodel this. But remember the Tinker's uh, stuff all connects now. So just right clicking anywhere on here. And I can select a crafting table. I can access the double chest that's there. I can access the tool forge. I can access the part builders. I can access the part and the pattern chest, which are now two different things. Um, and it seems that the pattern before the pattern chest could hold both the wooden patterns and the cast, that no longer seems to be the case. Um, you hold one or the other. Not a big deal, but you know, a minor annoyance. Um, then you got the stencil table, so then I can create everything and just stick it right into the pattern chest. Or I can uh, use this one and uh, or yeah, I can use this one here and just pull the parts straight out of the chest. They made it convenient now because you no longer have to pull it out of this area and put it in here. If they're in your chest, they'll show up here. You just click them and it'll automatically switch them out for you, which is kind of nice. Um, just remember, these aren't actually in your chest now, even though it gives you that option. So if you are getting ready to move or something, you will probably want to put that back in the chest, or else when you break this table, you're going to have a miscellaneous part lying around, or miscellaneous stencil. Not a big deal, but it can be annoying. Um, what else? We got the smeltery and everything over here, and the smeltery was actually part of the reason that Gray's mod failed. Um, basically, it tried to make the, the gray stone right here, and it couldn't do that because that block was occupied. So, yeah, um, with the gray's mod installed, don't step inside the smeltery. Um, Liquid player is not as fun as it sounds. Although it is a great death message, I might add. Um, I got the anvil here. Um, yeah. It's not really all that necessary with the Tinker's tools because you can just rename the stuff here. But I got, grabbed one in case I need to repair other things. Um, and frankly, as you saw over there, I have iron to spare. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, I've also noticed that the uh, random things mod is the one that has the beans, and I kind of was down on the beans earlier, but um, I got to admit, for a uh, you know starting food source, not bad because there's three different types of beans. Um, why is my caps locked on? There's the normal bean, um, which you can turn into the lesser magic bean which isn't all that special. Um, it's kind of like a portable ladder. You plant it, it grows a stalk, and it grows really high. Um, so you can use it to get to wherever you want. The only downside is it breaks everything above it. So if you plant it underground, you will definitely get a route straight to the surface, but you destroy any ground, rock, rubble, whatever that's in the, that's in the uh, meantime. Um, not really sure what happens if it goes to a pool of lava. Probably not anything good. But, uh, you also got the bean stew down here, which, the bean stew is equivalently mushroom stew, uh, as, as far as stats go, your hunger, your saturation, everything. And it's not hard to make, um, the only downside is it does have the bowls. It does return the bowls afterwards, but, you know, that's just something else you have to carry. Um, the nice thing is, is unlike the, the mushroom stew, these do stack. 
So um, really that just means you need have a stack of bean stew and you have a stack of bolts. I would show you them, but uh, like I said, I died and this is just what I got so far. So I've been mainly using carrots since then. Um, like I said, the lesser magic bean is equivalently a ladder, and the other magic bean can only be found in chests ne uh, near uh, what they call a nature core, which is out and about. I don't have one readily available to show you. There's a few that I came across in my journey while I was looking for a silver road tree, which you know took me all the way through here, down through here, down through here, and I finally found one over here, um, which interestingly enough is where I found the redwood trees too. Um, but um, yeah, the nature cores will have these and mis miscellaneous other uh, seeds and plants inside the chest. What these do is they grow and like the other ones they produce a beanstalk that uh, will grow upwards to a random height destroying everything in their path and then are topped with these bean pods. You climb up there, you break this bean pod and it will drop a random amount of iron, gold, emeralds, and diamonds that will ideally you will catch uh, right there but they will probably, all, the rest will just fall to the ground. You then slide down and uh, collect the rest of your stuff and when you break the bottom bean stalk the rest of it comes down with it. Fortunately, I have not seen any giants yet. Um, I have made it, the uh, focuses, but I don't have much nether quartz. So I've only made three so far. Um, the builder, the equal trade, and the shock. And the shock is basically my only offensive weapon right now. I mean, I can use the stone and uh, the hammer and the uh, lumber axe. They're but they're both decent, and I think they do like a 3x3 three three area. But with my shock, I can zap something from clear over there, and it has small homing. So, you know, I can use that and get it away. The only downside is if you look between my builder's wand, or my builder's wand cap, and my shock, uh, my terra and air um, bees is really low right now. And I have both fire and water nodes nearby, like that one over there. But I don't have any way of, I don't have any uh, nodes for air or terra. So I might have to um, either keep on growing silverwood trees until I get a node that has um, that aspect in it. Uh, like that node right there, I think is Ordo, I believe. Um, but I'll have to keep on growing them until either I find a node that has one in it. Yeah, that tree didn't spawn in one again, so I'll have to chop that down. I really hate having to chop these down because um, they don't always drop saplings, which is really annoying. So, um, sorry, off track. I'll have to find a node that either has Terra and Ordo in it and bring it over here, which there is a way in Thumbcraft to do. In fact, there's now a couple ways. Um, though there is a way in Blood Magic uh, to do that easier and better, really. Um, and that's to use these change position focuses, but they seem to have a couple different types now, so I'm not sure what the difference is. But I'll have to bring one of those over here so I can kind of replenish my uh, nodes easier. Right now I have the uh, research that prevents me from uh, causing any flux using that. Uh, I mean when I'm recharging my wand. But if I didn't have it, I'm sure I would have created a whole bunch of flux while I was creating this building. But, um... I think we're going to call it there for today. Um, again, this is a YouTube only video, um, and I tried to make another video that had some music in the background, and yeah, things didn't work out well. Um, so I kind of had to trash that video. Twitch got to see that, um, but it would have been 
pretty copy, I imagine. So, um, again, my name is Damien Oliver. Thank you for coming back to my channel. Um, with any luck, I should have a, out another video either later today or tomorrow at the latest where we go over a few things on blood magic. And then I hope to have another video um, shortly with a little bit of thumbcraft and what we've uh, learned since the world restart. So, um, again, thanks for visiting my channel and have a good day.